So we are going to continue our coverage over New Mutants for the Destiny of X era of X-Men comics. Now when it comes to New Mutants, this storyline takes place in issues number 26 through 28. And when it comes to this three part storyline, it picks up where number 25 left off at. Now remember, we have some characters right now trapped in limbo. That will be Magic, Danny Moonstar, Wolfbane, and also Madeline Pryor, the clone of Jean Grey. And they're stuck in limbo. Now originally, they went into limbo so that Magic will be able to hand limbo over to Madeline Pryor to give her a purpose, but to also free magic from Limbo. The problem was you had a character known as Sim say, so you know what? I had enough of magic ruling over Limbo. And so a mysterious character gave him a powerful weapon to use against her, and he did and it broke her soul sword and with that happening she was unable to lead her team out of limbo and unfortunately when they tried to escape they only appeared or teleported somewhere else in limbo and so now their goal is to figure out how in the world they are going to escape limbo and get back over to krakoa and so when we jump into New Mutants number 26, it literally just picks up with the last book left off at, where you see our heroes wondering, okay, what is going to be our next move? Because right now you are talking about the idea that we cannot escape Limbo because your soul sword was broken. And so unfortunately, we have to find a different way out of Limbo, or at least find a different way to bring your soul sword back to life because unfortunately it fell to a lot of different pieces and so you do have our heroes walk around until you have wolfbane realize something is happening over the mountain and so when they go over the mountain well they see an older version of magic and they're left to wonder what in the world is going on here why is there an older version of Magic but who also has Warlock on her arm? And let's not forget, Warlock is a Technarch, but usually he is connected to Cypher, who's back on Krakoa. So why in the world is there another version of Warlock here who's now attached to an older version of Magic? But on top of that, we see the two of them fighting against an army of demons who are also being controlled by Technarchs as well. And we're left to wonder what in the heck is happening because Technarchs is an alien race from another planet. And so how in the world were they able to access Limbo? Now, you do have Magic and Warlock being able to work together to get rid of the demons. But after that, she does see her younger self and the rest of the new mutants who are with Magic. And she says, you guys need to come inside right now before they are able to come back to life. Now, once our heroes do go inside, you then have the older version of Magic say, let me tell you what happened. Because yes, I am the older version of you. And I already know what is going to happen to you and your friends. Let me explain. The first two to die is going to be Danny Moonstar and also Wolfbane together. A year later, you're going to lose Madeline Pryor. After that, Warlock is going to appear. When he does appear, we learn that Earth has fallen. Krakoa is gone. We are the last two survivors of the mutant race. And so we're left to wonder if what she is saying is true. Now she also says she knows how to defeat the demons because apparently there is a stronghold nearby where the demons are coming from. If she is able to get rid of their leaders, then the demons should go away. Now, later on in the day, you do have Magic being able to talk to her older self. And this is really more of Magic saying, why are you staying here? Why stay here and fight? Why not try to go back to Earth? And you have her older self say, because that is what we do. We stay and fight instead of doing something different or possibly better. Now, while you have the two magics talking to one another, well, that is when you have a demon appear. One of the demons who's being controlled are covered in Technarchs. 
either way this demon says his leader wants to make a deal with the younger magic saying if they help the demons out they'll make sure they'll have a way back home to earth all they have to do is hand over the older version of magic and of course you have both ladies left in the face of the demon and he goes back home to tell his boss the deal was denied we then pick up with Colossus and you have Colossus right now back on Krakoa looking for his sister. Unfortunately, he cannot find his sister because no one knows that right now the group of new mutants are trapped in limbo. And so as he goes around, he's wondering, has anybody seen my sister or Danny Moonstar, Wolfbane? or at least Madeline Pryor, and everybody is saying no left and right. And this does concern Colossus a lot. But getting back over to Limbo, well, we see our heroes being confronted by an army of demons. Once again, these demons are all being controlled by Technarch. Not control, but they are combined with Technarchs. But we see them one more time trying to make a deal with magic by saying, hey, go ahead and give us your older self. If you do, we'll give you a way back home to Earth. But once again, you do have the younger version of Magic say, no, there is no way I'm going to give up the older version of me. Now, that is the moment you do have the leader of the demons appear, and that will be Sim. Because, let's not forget, we have an older version of Magic. It would make sense for us to see an older version of Sam. Now that explains why she has been unable to finally get rid of these demons because Sam was the one who did break younger version magic soul sword which means that when it comes to the older version the same thing had happened but on top of that any kind of thing she tried to do to defeat him just did not work. Either way he says you know what I am tired and tired trying to get rid of you. Now, he's not saying the younger version, he's saying that to the older version. Either way, it does lead into a battle where you do have the older version try her best to take down Sim. Unfortunately, she does lose that battle. But luckily for her, you didn't have the younger version of Magic step in. And they able, they are able, sorry, they are able to work together to get rid of the older version of Sim. Now, once doing that, she's also able to get a new kind of sword. Because what she did was, she took the Technarch that was covering Sim's body, the older version of Sim, and just used that as a way to give her a new kind of sword. Now, the way this chapter ends, you will believe that this could be her new soul sword. It's not going to be. And so when we jump into the next chapter of the story, we pick up with the new mutants right now, our group, getting kidnapped by an unknown force of demons. And apparently, they're all being taken to the Red King, except for one. And we already know who that is. That would be Magic. She's the only one left behind, but the others are taken away. And we're left to wonder, who is the Red King? And so when it comes to this chapter right here for Magic, well, she's going to meet a younger version of herself this time. Now, when it comes to her seeing her younger self, she's wondering what in the world is going on. Because she knows or she does not remember about the time she met her present day self. And so she's wondering what in the world is going on. Did she forget this moment or did, did someone make her forget this moment? Why in the world is she here right now with her younger self? Now, when it comes to her younger self, she does remind us, the fans, but also Magic, that at this point in time, she's being kept here in limbo by an evil bad guy known as Blasco. As a matter of fact, that took place back in the Magic miniseries in 1980s. Either way, she's saying right now your friends were taken away by the Red King. Now while you have the two magics talking to one another, you can tell that they're bonding because of who they are. They're both the same person, but at the same time, the present day magic feels really bad for the younger version of herself because she knows what her younger self 
is going to go through when it comes to being stuck here in limbo with Blasco. Either way, she does tell her younger self that she will help her defeat the Red King, but at the same time free her friends as well. And we do get another page where we are able to see that our other heroes are trapped in some cells right now. And the Red King is just gloating in their face that he was able to capture them. But we have no idea who the Red King is. Right now, he's just a shadowy figure. And we're left to wonder who is the Red King. But getting back over to Colossus, who's on Krakoa, we do see him still looking for his sister Magic, and also the other members of the New Mutants who are with her. And so while he's walking around, out of nowhere, a portal does open up, and he is grabbed and taken into Limbo. And so now Colossus is also stuck in Limbo with Magic and the other members of the New Mutants who are with her right now at the moment. And when we meet back up with Colossus, well, he already met back up with Magic in the younger version of Magic. Matter of fact, you have all three characters getting ready to go confront the Red King. Now, when it comes to Colossus and Magic, I do want to say that these two characters, they do have some bad blood between each other. Now, with that being said, at the end of the storyline, they're going to apologize to one another, forgive one another. But to explain why they have bad blood, I'm going to save that at the end of the story. Either way, when it comes to Colossus, he wasn't brought here by Magic. He was brought here by the younger version of Magic. Because when it came to young Ileana, she wanted her brother so bad. Back in that four-part miniseries, the one thing she wanted the most was her big brother. To hopefully save her and get her out of limbo. And so it would make sense that the younger version of Magic would somehow bring her brother here into Limbo once again to help her fight against the Red King. And so matter of fact, he is here to help her out. And of course, present day Magic as well. But then we see our heroes being able to go after the Red King to free their friends. Now, when it comes to the Red King, we can say right off the bat that he looks like a different version of Blasco. Now, the book does not say he is another version of Blasco, but we can say he is because what he's trying to do, he's trying to get the young girl, the young Ileana, but at the same time, he wants to capture present day Ileana. And so this could tell us right off the bat, this is just another version of the Red King. With that being said, our heroes are able to fight against them and win. Well, at first, they don't win because you do have magic struggle to actually defeat him. And matter of fact, when he does have her on the ropes, he mentions that it seems like her magic is fractured, like she's a broken prism. And that explains why we're seeing different versions of magic right now, a future version a past version and so right now that means because her magic is fractured we're going to see different versions of magic all over the place matter of fact right now either way you do have magic being able to tap into her magic once again and get another kind of soul sword but with this soul sword she was able to get rid of the red king now again even if this is another version of Blasco, it's not the main version. And so with her defeating the Red King, it's not like she killed off the real Blasco. So unfortunately, the young version of Magic still has to deal with uh, Blasco and Limbo in her own storyline. Now, once they're able to defeat the Red King, the area they're in turns back to normal. And this begins the process of us saying goodbye to the younger version of Ileana, the younger version of Magic. But right before she leaves, she does say goodbye to Colossus. And this reminds us of the early days of X-Men comics when Colossus first appeared. Because when he first appeared, he was all about his sister. Now, after the whole Limbo thing, things kind of got a tad bit hard for Magic and Colossus because... Before she went into Limbo, she was a young girl. But then when she came out of Limbo, she was a teenager. And then being able to join the New Mutants, and she was a hero. Something Colossus did not want for his sister at all. But unfortunately, it happened. Either way, it's a great reminder that when she was a young girl, Colossus cared for his sister a lot. 
Matter of fact, he called her his snowflake. But she does say goodbye to both Colossus and the older version of herself, present day magic. But before she does leave, she does give our heroes an acorn. And that is another nod to the 1983 miniseries for magic. Either way, when it comes to the acorn, it was able to teleport our heroes somewhere else. Except right after they leave, well, the real Red King, Blasco, does appear and wonders where has the young magic been at and who was she talking to. And of course, this leads right back into the miniseries where we see magic being stuck in limbo, being tortured in the own way of Blasco. And as we jump into the last chapter of the story, we pick up with our heroes telling us it has been a couple weeks since the ending of the last chapter. But right now you have our hero saying, we should storm the castle because right now that is their only ticket home to earth. And so they're saying, let's go ahead and do that. So we are able to defeat Sim. He's the only person standing in our way. But here's the thing. When it comes to magic, she's saying no, because she wants to make sure that she is able to get her soul sword back, which means that the other swords we saw earlier, they were just regular swords, not regular. They are powerful, but they're not her soul sword. That is what she wants in return right now. And so even though you have most of our heroes agree with the idea of going ahead and storming the castle to defeat Sim, you have magic say, no, not yet. I need my soul sword. But you also have Danny Moonstar say, yes, we need to storm the castle, but at the same time, I don't want to. And the reason why you have Danny Moonstar saying, yes, we should storm the castle, but at the same time, let's not do that because of Madeline prior because let's not forget before this video magic was going to give limbo over to madeline prior because for magic this place just reminds her of horrible things she was stuck in limbo for years and tortured by blasco for years and so she wants to get rid of this place and why not give it over to madeline prior but the thing is for a Moonstar, that's a bad idea because the last time Madeline Pryor was the ruler of Limbo, we had a whole Marvel event known as Inferno, where basically it was held on Earth. And so you have her saying, why would you give her access to something she had used in the past for pure evil? Now, this is where you have Madeline chime in because let's not forget, the whole purpose of Madeline right now is trying to basically get away from the mutants because when she originally appeared in Marvel Comics, we found out that she was a clone of Jean Grey thanks to Mr. Sinister. He made her because he realized if Jean Grey and Cyclops had a child, that child would be a very powerful mutant, except Jean Grey was quote unquote dead. And so he made a clone of Jean Grey so that they're still able to have a powerful mutant. And that is what Madeline was made for originally. But over the years, she tried to move away from that origin because she realized she's not her own person. She's just a clone of Jean Grey. She was just some kind of being created by Mr. Sinister, an evil person. And so to her, Limbo gives her the ability to move away from that dark past, to have a new beginning, somewhere where she feels like she belongs. And so once again, she says, you don't understand what it is like to be created for only one purpose. And every single time you try to move away from that past, it keeps pulling you back in. When I had died back in Hellion's first storyline, you guys brought me back to life with a process that was actually created alongside with my creator, the guy I hate the most, Mr. Sinister. And so thanks to that right there, I am right now back where I started at, where I'm trying to get away from my creator. So honestly, leave me alone. Let magic go ahead and give me limbo so that I'm able to get the heck away from you guys. But after all of that, you still have magic say, yes, I'm going to give limbo over to Madeline Pryor. And matter of fact, you have our heroes do the ritual. Now, as you have the ritual happening, you still have Danny Moonstar saying, 
this is a bad idea because she's still concerned about the idea of giving someone who once had Limbo, who used Limbo as a way to attack the Earth, who could now possibly attack the Earth again down the road. And they have no idea if she will or not. But the ritual is done. Madeline Pryor is now the one in charge of Limbo. But we then see our heroes begin the process of storming the castle that belongs in Sim to hopefully defeat him and to finally get back home to Earth. And so we see our heroes just fighting against a bunch of demons. You have our heroes doing everything they can to hopefully get out of this battle with a victory. Now, that is the moment you have magic be confronted by Sim. And when she is confronted by Sim, this is him reminding her the last time they fought, he won. He destroyed her soul sword. And so right now it's him saying, what hope do you have? What hope do you have that you believe that you will be able to actually defeat me? Because last time I defeated you. Now let's not forget, the only reason why Sim is more powerful now than magic is because a mysterious person gave him a power juice, a power jump. And we have no idea who that person was. Either way, right now it does lead into a battle between our two characters, except right when you have magic about to struck Sim, someone else from behind hits her in the head. And that is when we see another version of magic, except this version of magic is just the same age, but a darker version of magic. And what I mean that this version right here is just the version of magic who actually took the throne of Limbo and stayed in Limbo. And that is very important because when it comes to our magic, she did take over the throne of Limbo, except she never stayed in Limbo. She would come back here and visit, but then she would leave all over again to go back to Earth. And so this version of magic says, no, I'm the you who has stayed here in Limbo and actually became the ruler of Limbo and never left Limbo at all to go back to Earth. And so I'm more powerful than you are because I stay here and I learn how to control Limbo and do different things that you have no idea about. I am a better you. And so we're left to believe that this version of magic is the reason why Sim had became so powerful. Because right now, this other version of magic is trying to get our version of magic to follow the same path. Either way, it does lead into a battle between our heroes and this version of magic. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to the battle, it doesn't last that long. Matter of fact, this is the process where we see the story begin to wrap up very quickly because when you do have our magic fight against her darker version of herself, well, at first, the darker version is winning, but then out of nowhere, she's stabbed from behind by Madeline Pryor. And so with that being said, the dark version dies just like that. Unfortunately, this is the only book we see the darker version of magic. But right after she dies, all of her magic goes right over to our magic. And we see this golden armor of magic, where it seems like she's more powerful than she was just a moment ago. And right after that, she says, now I have the ability to send everybody back home to Limbo except Madeline Pryor, so that she can stay here and be the ruler of Limbo. And everybody goes home just like that. And when we see magic again, it's her and her brother Colossus having that conversation. You know, hey, let's sit down, let's talk, and try to figure out why there is bad blood between the two of them. And really, the reason why there is bad blood goes all the way back into that mini series again with the idea that technically she was stuck in limbo. Now, here's the thing, because it was years for her being stuck in limbo. Before our heroes on Earth, the X-Men back then, it was like five seconds, 10 seconds, and that was it. That is how crazy time is in limbo. Either way, because she was there for so long, because she was tortured in limbo for so long, that she kind of felt like her brother never did try to come and get her even though he couldn't get there, even though he had his hand out praying and hoping that she would grab his hand and pull him out of limbo. 
she still felt like her brother wasn't there for her. And when she came back, it wasn't like Colossus was there being like, hey, it's okay. I'm still your big bro. I'll help you through this process. Instead, it was kind of like, okay, you're back. You're a teenager. I have no idea what to do with you. I guess to put you on the new mutants? And that was really it. He basically backed off once his little sister grew up to a teenager. He wasn't being that big brother for her anymore. And so that is the whole problem she has when it comes to the idea of why there's bad blood between the two of them. And for Colossus, he realized what he did was wrong because he did back off. Once she came back as a teenager, not a young girl, he's kind of like, I have no idea what to do. I know I hurt you. I know I wasn't there for you. And unfortunately, when I tried to be there for you, I couldn't be. And then now recently, it seems like when I try to remember different things, there are gaps in my memory and I have no idea why. And some of those memories I'm forgetting is you. And so it's really the brother and sister here saying, let's try to rebuild our relationship. Let's try to be what we were before all the X-Men nonsense had happened. And so this is a new beginning for our characters. And to wrap up today's video, well, we jump back over to Limbo. And when we do, we see the demons right now discussing the idea that they're just tired of the different leaders coming and going. You have Blasco, you have Magic, you have Sim. Now you have someone else. Oh, it is Madeline Pryor. Matter of fact, saying her name leads into the ending of the book because when she does appear, she does kill off that demon that was trying his best to talk some smack. And she says, are you guys done now? Because now we can get back to work and you can now love your queen once again. She's now back in control of Limbo. And this is where we end today's comic book video. So please leave me a like down below and subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions on books I should read, well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. Also, guys, I want to tell you, this has been a great time to read Destiny of X. I love almost every single book. Either way, this is where we are going to end today's comic book video. So, guys, later.